Hey there guys, this is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and today we're talking about professions. Now, we are up on the Alpha of Shadowlands, and as you can see, there are still a few bugs to work out in the Alpha, but I thought I'd take this uh, fun little unique bug that I've never seen before, no clip, uh, to take a look at some of the professions. We'll start off with alchemy. Now, there aren't profession trainers in the game yet. Uh, the herbs and ore nodes aren't fully implemented, so a lot of this isn't actually in the game. But if you create a mage and you go to Stormwind or Org, then you can learn the vanilla uh, version of the profession and you can look at the unlearn tab. So we can go through and take a look at what's going on with alchemy. So I'm gonna go through each profession one by one. Um, I have a lot to say about each profession, and I don't want to give y'all like a two hour video. So uh, let's let's get started. I'm gonna do a five star ranking system. The first star is going to be based on how good the profession is for raiders because whenever a new raid comes out, the you know that first month, there's this huge influx of buyers on the auction house and you want each profession to get a piece of that. But, once that raid gets stale, uh, you you have six months or a year where you still want to be able to make gold. You, you want to be able to use your professions as a job and make some income. So our second star is going to be, um, is the profession good for non-raiders and specifically non-PVEers? The third star is going to be for evergreen content. Uh, things like Vile of the Sands. Is this profession something that people are going to, like, it, it has inherent value outside of the Shadowlands expansion? Is it something people are going to be buying two, five, ten years from now? And then the fourth star is going to be story. At BlizzCon, I talked to a lot of Blizzard designers, and they all said, uh, regardless of their discipline, that their number one goal was to tell a good story. Now, there are four times as many alchemists as there are raiders. So, we're gonna see if they tell the story of Shadowlands as at least as well through alchemy as they do through the raids, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with raiding. Uh, this is gonna be easy because alchemy's always been great, required for raiders. Uh, we've got, of course, combat potions. We've got the basic uh, stat potions, and then we've got what I call the fancy potions. You can call them pre-pots uh, pre or whatever. Uh, but these are fun things that, where's, where's the, uh, Potion of Spiritual Clarity. Yeah, like, if you stand still, you gotta stand still for 10 seconds, but you get a whole bunch of mana back. Or, uh, you know, you do AoE damage to a target between zero and 8,000 damage, depending on how much missing health the enemy has. You know, stuff that you have to think about and is potentially better than just a boring old stat increase, but it has, you know, there's a skill, there's, there's a skill curve to it. So you gotta know the fights and know which fights to use what on. I like those and uh, they're back. We also have flasks back and it looks like they've been consolidated a little bit. Spectral flask of power because I'm a mage and I use intellect, it's show it's giving me intellect. If I was on a warrior, this would give me strength. I kind of like that. I'm not a huge fan of redundancy, and this uses one of every herb uh, in the new expansion. Mentioning that, we do have some interesting stuff with herbalism. We have one herb that's found in every zone, we have one rare herb found in every zone, and then, similar to how Legion was, we have one zone-specific herb in each of the four zones. So, Maldraxxus has its own, Ravendreth has its own, Ardenweld and Bastion each have their own herb. I'll go into more detail on that whenever we get into the herbalism guide, and only two of them are actually implemented into the game right now. 
We also have a new thing, uh, modified crafting reagents, optional crafting reagents for alchemy. Each profession has one, but for alchemy, they're called concoctions. So the uh, alchemist pouch increases the duration of your flask effects. I assume this is going to require alchemy. Uh, this one grants the wear agility. This one gives you strength. And this one gives you intellect. Uh, the rest, these three aren't implemented yet. So you may be asking yourself, wait a second, isn't enchanting armor with main stat buffs, isn't that part of the enchanting profession? And you'd be right, yes, yes it is. But uh, it's good for raiders, so we're gonna give this a star for raiding. Now for the non-PVE stuff, uh, we have some cool things over here, uh, the return of weapon oils. These are really raider buffs, but I'm gonna throw them in with the non-PVP things because they just, they'll make questing easier. Uh, when you apply it to a ranged weapon, it gives your attacks and spells a, prance, a chance to proc extra damage. This one heals you and gives you a shield. The fancy potions actually benefit from these. They're, they're empowered usually by 10%, 10% uh, or 20% for this one, uh, if you have a specific oil on your weapon. So that's real. That's a cool integration. I like things that are good for the casual player, but that let those, you know, min maxi progression raiders really feel like they can min and max. Gives them something for their big brains to do. Other than that, we do have utility potions, a few of them. Uh, this increases your stealth detection. This uh, is an anti-venom. This one increases your move speed while dead by 100%, and this one gives you invisibility. So, kind uh, there's not really enough here that's just like that's just five or six things there's not really enough here to give you uh, a good income in the off season but uh so i don't want to give it a star but there was an attempt made so half a star it goes up on the fridge so next we've got evergreen content, and I actually skipped over the last crafting reagent that's added to the game, and it's this one, the culinary concoction. Now, this increases the duration of your well-fed effects, and if you compare it to uh, this one, where you get more strength, the, the, the bolstering or the brilliant concoction, these actually increase how much damage you do. So raiders are gonna use this one, whereas this one has kind of, it has a few gold making potentials. So uh, if you're transmog farming, you're gonna be using bear tartar. This increases the duration of your bear tartar. And since you're not going to die while you're transmog farming, whereas raiders die every two minutes, uh, you're not gonna die while you're transmog farming. So you can get some benefit out of this. You can also get some benefit out of this if you're farming like the spine shell crab or some other feast of the fishes underwater farm, uh, you can increase the duration of your feast of the fishes so there's some interesting options you could do with this but it's not enough to get a star by itself there is one last hope for evergreen content and that is the transmutes there are eight transmutes already added but they aren't implemented yet um so until i know what these are i can't give it a star and just watching the development of this over time, it's kind of obvious that they started off with kind of an outline of here are the things we're comfortable with in alchemy, let's see how we can make them fit in with this whole new expansion, rather than starting with the story of the expansion and saying what cool things would help enrich the story and come naturally out of the story, um, which kind of bums me out. Anyway, no star for evergreen content. 
So mentioning story, we actually have two attempts at storytelling. Uh, one is the potion of sacrifice to anima, and this is this is kind of fun because uh, it, your next four mana consuming spells or abilities will use seven percent of your health instead of mana. I love this because people are going to totally die to this, and it, it makes you think like, oh, what are my most mana hungry spells? Let me use those back to back. Oh wait, that wasn't the right time now I don't have it later it creates some complications in uh, your 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 cast sequence and I love that and in addition to that it's you know something something anima something something sacrifice I mean it doesn't like you can't tell by reading any of these like who we're fighting or what the goal of the expansion is they aren't telling the story through the profession but one thing that they are doing is telling the story of the profession itself a little bit better by adding extracts. Now, uh, extracts are this really cool process of uh, adding an extra step. As you can see, um, these, you know, <laughs> spectral, something, something spectral, something, something eternal, like everything's like ghosty goo names. Uh, the, the basic stat potions use just the base flowers, but the fancy potions use the ground up flowers and you create those here. So you take the basic flower, you grind it up in a mortar and pestle and you mill it down. Wait a second, mill it down? That sounds familiar. Oh right, that's because Inscription already does this. We already have a profession that does this and you're creating redundancy by putting it also in alchemy. Either don't have it in alchemy or create an interesting synergy between the two professions. So for that, no stars. And you know what, actually, this really bothers me. So at last BlizzCon, Ian Hezekostas has said that he was going to work to make all the professions feel useful again. As we've seen so far, there has been no effort made to make uh, alchemy useful outside of strictly a raiding environment. And more than that, it's taking a potential integration with another profession where uh, in alchemy or, you know, maybe just inscription mills things down or maybe alchemy also has the milling option now and they both create these uh, these items and so one is feeding the other. Scribes create the pigments and the pigments are used by the alchemists. Uh, then scribes can make gold by just milling things down over and over and selling it to alchemists. That could be an option where you have kind of a feeder profession. It's synergy, it's integration, and it bothers me that he said he was going to work to make things useful and then not only does this not tell the story that they said that was the goal of the profession but it detracts from other professions and it doesn't feel useful outside of rating so you know what minus one star alchemy in shadowlands half a star out of five uh the profession if you have alchemy is going to be great just like usual for the first month of a new raid and then it's gonna suck uh the, the everything we have right now uh is uh, it's, it's, it's a bad profession and I, uh, I think they should redo everything, start from the ground up, start thinking about what each herb offers and what the story behind each herb is, how it integrates into the story and what crafts can be used by combining these herbs in special ways that help tell the story for both raiders and non-raiders alike. I'll see you next video. Good luck and happy gold making.